Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 5th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Another quick blog post today about what's normal. This time I looked at the payload being transmitted in TCP and UDP sessions. Average UDP session, of course, had less payload than your average TCP session. That's not terribly surprising given that UDP is often used for protocols like DNS and these little information exchanges. What was initially a little bit surprising is that we had a large number of TCP connections with very little data, actually only 44 bytes total. Now, this included all the headers, and these are essentially your incomplete connections, your port scans, where you have just a IP and TCP header, and then often just one TCP option, like the maximum segment size. Again, why is this important? Well, it's important because uh, that's uh, what you should look at if you don't expect a compromise at first. And then you look at anomalies. Like here, I looked at the two connections that uh, transmit the most data. There was one UDP and one TCP connection with hundreds of megabytes each. Well, it turned out the TCP connection was my cloud backup and the UDP connection, a VPN connection. And if you know these things ahead of time, then of course, once you have an incident, it's easier to eliminate sort of these anomalies as something that's well, not an anomaly, but perfectly normal. And we got a surprise update from Apple. Now, initially, this update, iOS and iPadOS 17.03, was announced as fixing an overheating problem that some of the new iPhones apparently are having. But turned out, it also fixed two security vulnerabilities, one of them already being exploited. There is one vulnerability that we are rating critical because it's a buffer overflow that results in arbitrary code execution. That's in web. RTC. That is not already exploited according uh, to Apple, but would make sort of a great initial access vector. The second vulnerability is already exploited, and that's another kernel privilege escalation of vulnerability. These have not been exploited against iOS 17, according to Apple, but against iOS before iOS 16.6. Given that uh, WebRTC is used also by Mac OS and, uh, well, Mac OS and the iOS kernel share a lot of code, I would not be surprised to see in the near future an update fixing these vulnerabilities for Mac OS as well. And Qualys disclosed details about a new Linux privilege escalation of vulnerability. They're calling it Looney Tunables. Its CVE number is 2023-4911. What makes this one special is that it's in the glibc library. LD.so, that part is responsible for basically dynamically loading libraries as needed. Most Linux distributions are using glibc. There are some uh, exceptions like, for example, Alpine, but your big ones like Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora are vulnerable here and have already released updates in the last few days. So if you are automatically applying them, you may already be good here. Exploitation is rather straightforward, which makes this even worse. And uh, yes, there have been sufficient details available uh, to create exploits. The attacker needs to set the glibc underscore tunables environment variable uh, to the value that then triggers the buffer overflow in order to exploit this vulnerability. Again, it's just a privilege escalation vulnerability, but it's a relatively easy and very universal uh, vulnerability, which certainly does make it interesting and something that you should patch quickly. But we're not done yet for today with already exploited vulnerabilities. Atlassian is reporting that a privilege escalation vulnerability in Confluence data center and server has already been exploited. They have released a patch for this for now. CVE 2023-22515. They gave it a CVSS score of 
10, which would indicate a little bit more than just sort of approach escalation vulnerability, but uh, that's what they're calling it. It does allow access to uh, repositories and then attackers will use this vulnerability to actually create new administrative accounts. Well, and this is it for today. So let me stop looking before I find even more Saturday vulnerabilities. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.